<clears throat> All right, so we'll be back in the house of the Lord this morning. We're uh, looking forward to this lesson. It's a good lesson. I've been studying it for two or three days, and uh, the more I study, the better it gets. And maybe I can uh, share a little of it with you. Maybe the uh, reading of God's words uh, will bless you. I know it will. If you'll listen to it. Page or uh, Matthew five, uh, chapter chapter five, verse one. Matthew five. Verse 1. I'm going to talk to you some of this morning about the Beatitudes and uh, it's something that we can uh, look at and kind of use it as a guideline to direct our directions and uh, help us to walk in a way that would be pleasing to the Lord. In chapter 5 of Matthew, verse 1, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. Now, up in uh, the latter chapter in 4, 25, it says, And there followed him a great multitude of people from Galilee and from the Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. So we see the multitude following him. But here we see, uh, seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And I, I think what he's saying, uh, why that the, the Matthew's writing is this way, is because that uh, he wasn't speaking uh, directly to the multitudes that were listening, because a lot of them, a lot of them were uh, were not saved. Right. And this this lesson, this lesson is uh, blessed. Is a, a, a notice. Uh, there's uh, several of the uh, verses and it starts off with blessed and, and it, this word blessed means that happy or you know a lot of times uh, people will uh, come to you and say you, boy you're, you're really blessed with so and so or blessed with this or blessed with that and, 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 and it's, it's, it's showing you what the God has done for you and here we see here he says blessed are the poor so this was, I believe, in the uh, the disciples that had that they gathered, and, and they don't say anything about the apostles yet, but it's the disciples that was following Jesus. So he said here in verse uh, two, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, "Blessed are the poor in spirit." Now you know when we when we see this poor in spirit, I believe the the thing that we uh, think about is that the poor in spirit are those that are trying their their level best to serve the Lord, and uh, uh, I believe that they are they're the ones that are always seeking Him, and He is He is saying you're blessed mm -hmm. because you have that love towards Me and you have that attitude that you want to serve Me, and so He said. Um, even even if you're poor in spirit, yet you're you're blessed because you realize who you're serving. And so this morning, uh, it's not it's not a uh, it's not a thing to feel sorry uh, about for anybody when they say uh, blessed are the poor in spirit because we use the word poor as uh, not having anything. Uh, but here, these people have a lot. Right, they are they are they are thinking on the Lord, and so we as uh, God's people need to. That's one of the things I believe that we fail so much is 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 letting the world come in and take away this blessing here of not uh, thinking about the Lord and how that He has blessed us from the, every day. And I mean, hey, we could we could sit down all day long and just think about what the Lord's done for us. And Amen. Still, we still wind up short uh, of serving Him. But anyway, He's saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Or the, uh, the For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, He's offering them, He's saying that they're going to inherit a kingdom because of this close serving. And the, the kingdom, I believe, that He's talking about here is in the new world when uh, John looked and saw the new heaven and the new earth coming down, uh, this will be part of their reward. It will be their reward because that they have served Him so well. And He says again here that uh, they, are, they are happy uh, in the highest degree of happiness that you can, uh, that you can think about. Because I, I thought about these things when we, 
when we are close to the Lord, there's nothing that's any better. Amen. There's, there's nothing. I don't care if uh, you can think of the best meal you could have, you can think of the best home you could have, the best anything. But listen, when and, and, and especially when you're down and out and uh, uh, and sometimes you get kind of sidetracked and you're concerned about getting forgiveness for that and sometimes it doesn't happen right away when you get that forgiveness because sometimes the Lord lets you kind of simmer in a little bit but when you get that when you get that relief and when you get that that feeling of, of being uh, rid of it there's there's nothing no better Amen. there's nothing no better and you can uh, you can think all day and you won't think of anything any better but he says also here that uh, he's saying blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted and the mourning I believe that the mourning that there that he's talking about here is first of all for our souls uh, we need to we need to mourn uh, and keep our souls in, in a condition to where that we can be close to the Lord. And also, we sit sometimes and mourn for others because we see them in the in the path of unrighteousness, and they're close loved ones to us. And uh, that's a hurtful thing when we uh, have to, you know, and just continually mourn for for them. And you never you don't see anything happening in their life, and that's a that's a terrible thing. But here, I think he's talking about their condition as as towards God, and they are they're continually mourning, just like that uh, uh, up here where that they are poor in spirit. Uh, they're poor in spirit. They're mourning, and remember, he's talking to those that are saved. And so he said, "Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted." And uh, again, uh, with this comfort, you know, he's. Uh, he's saying uh, in verse 12, rejoice. And of course, this morning, at, when it's all over with, they will have a rejoicing Amen. in soul. And uh, that's one of the things this morning that we need to look forward to is that rejoicing that when we get to the, you know, uh, and I was we sang, singing that song, I'm going that way. Listen, as we go along that way, we ought to be mourning, but we ought to be rejoicing too because, listen, we mourn a lot of time because we have this ungodly flesh to right. put up with, but we're going that way, and one day we'll have this mourning through with, and we'll be in the, in the, in the, in the same uh, location with our Father, Jesus Christ. So he said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be uh, comforted. And the comfort that, uh, uh, the comfort, the comfort, we can say our, our faith is strong and all this, but our comfort, when we, when we hear the Father say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, listen, that comfort will be more real to us than it is <coughs> through our faith. Right. It will be, it will be something that we can just say, well, uh, I believe it. And I, 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 I live for it, and I did what I tried could do, and, and I, I wanted it, but now I know for sure because I've heard God say it, speak it to us, and it, it'll be a more, it'll be more uh, 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 confident. So he said here, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, uh, I want to, uh, if you will, just with me just a minute, let me, let me read something to you here in Psalms 37. Psalms uh, <coughs> 37. I think I have a mark here. Just bear with me just a minute. Psalms <coughs> 37. Yeah. In verse uh, in verse one of of Psalms uh, 37, it says. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. And here I, I, I want to I want you I want to get back to my lesson just a minute and, and reread this here. In in uh, uh, he says here in uh, blessed uh, blessed are the, the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now I want you to see here. He says, "Be not envious or fret not yourself." This, you know, when we can, when we can 
say, well, you know, whatever. And, and, and you know, we, we have this scripture where the, the Bible says, if, the, if they slap you on their one side, turn the other side to them. Here, fret not is, is, a, is a type of meekness because uh, if you don't fret about someone that is mistreating you or whatever, notice he says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass. And we, <clears throat> you know, the meek, don't look forward to those being cut down by grass because right. even though they're enemies of of us, we know we know their condition, mm -hmm. we know their destiny, and so this is this is part of the meekness. Is not saying, "Oh, I'm glad to see that happen to them," because that's the wrong attitude to have. Amen. That's the wrong attitude. So he says, "For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and withered as the green herbs." Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man, the the man who bringeth wicked wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And so this this thing of, of, of meekness uh, and, the, and and the psalmist said here, don't fret about it. And, and we have so many people this day and time that has a desire to do harm to us. Right. But listen, uh, we, need to, we need to have the attitude, we need to have, be in a state of mind, hey, listen, instead of me trying to get him back, I'm going to pray for him. And that, that, will, that, will be, that will be a help to you in days to come because, listen, the Bible says that he's going to be cut down shortly like the grass. Well, you need to pray for him instead of criticizing. Him. Right. And you need to you need to be you need to be much in prayer for him because listen, uh, that one that you pray for could be the one that will save and be a, a witness to one of your loved ones. Right. And that would be the way that the Lord would would reward you. And so this this is this is what he's talking about about being meek. Blessed in verse five, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. And then, and if you wanted to uh, sometime read uh, this other, uh, uh, in uh, Revelation 21, uh, it's talking about, like I was talking about, all oh, this earth is coming down uh, out, of, out, of, uh, out, from, out of God, from out of heaven, down to this earth. Uh, that will be the other earth they, there. So they are inheriting the protection of this earth, and they're going to also inherit that new earth, which they, which John saw. Amen. So he said, "Blessed in verse six, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled." And this thing of of uh, of, 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 of hungering and thirsting, they have a desire in their hearts to serve the Lord. And so he says, "Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst." after righteousness and that is something this morning that uh, so many people has lost their appetite for uh, they don't they don't hunger and thirst after righteousness they don't they don't want to even take time to take their Bible out and try to study it they don't want to even take time to praise the Lord for for a good healthy body, for a good home, and for things like this, they don't do it. Right. So here, here this morning, we need to think upon all of these things that that we're reading here, and try to put some of them in practice and mean them from the heart, and say, Lord, I'm 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 praying to you. I'm trying to serve you. I'm trying to honor you, and uh, and you will get these blessings. We'll get them. And and uh, and, and I, I I'm not saying. Some of you are, are not getting blessed because of this, but listen, it's a general thing that we need to practice and we need to do it and we can't get too close to the Lord. Now, in verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, 
for they shall obtain mercy. And I wanted to, I got something over here in Mark I found. I want to read it. It's something along these lines. Uh, and, and, and Mark 11. Okay, at Mark 11, 23. Look at the letter 23. And it's, it's like that. I'm going to read it anyway. <clears throat> Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you you receive them and you shall have them. Now this is this is why this is why I'm I, you know I want to I want to teach this lesson because listen we have got we have got a Fort Knox mm -hmm. we have got all the gold in a thousand he was all the cattle there on that's our fathers and listen we have got this that we can we can ask for any part of it and here's what he's saying. Here, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have all against any. And Amen. here, again, we so many times fail to do this right here. When we're praying and asking the Lord to bless us and, and thanking Him for all that He's done for us, we don't think about that one that in the back of our mind, well, he's he's mistreated me or he whatever, and we don't pray for him like we should. And that's another thing this morning that we should remember to try to do is to pray for those because he says uh, here uh, when you stand, I'll find it in a minute. <clears throat> and when you stand, pray, forgiving if you have all against any that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Amen. And so that's the thing this morning when you ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, if you're not if you're not willing to forgive those that are trespassing against you, then listen, that puts you in a predicament because God said, Well, I don't see a I don't see a good part here right. praying to me and uh, we're going to let this, uh, this kind of let this stay for a while, and, uh, and 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 that a lot of times that's what our problem is that we can't get in touch with the Lord is because we're not willing to to forgive those that that, that are uh, that are uh, against us. Amen. And so he says here in verse twenty six, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And so that's something this morning that we need to think upon as we uh, try to pray and as we try to serve the Lord because a lot of times I know we pray uh, and I know I pray and I know sometimes it seems like that uh, I just cannot get the, the full grip on what, what I want to, to say. Uh, I can't feel that assurance like I want, want it to be. And sometimes I have to say, well, Lord, for just forgive me of my sins. That's all I can do. Because, listen, there's times in my life that I just can't get close to the Lord and get a, 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 get a hold of Him like I want to. Right. A lot of times it's, it's because of this old flesh and I've got things there that's hindering me. So, in our lesson back in uh, chapter 5, verse uh, chapter five, verse uh, uh, 9, he says here, Blessed, Blessed are the peacemakers... For they shall be called the children of God. And uh, uh, here, here is a thing that, uh, in, in uh, I believe it's in John twenty. I, I want, I got it. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just bear with me, and, and if you can turn, if you don't, I'll just listen to what I have to read. But in John twenty, I'm going to read something to you. All right, now let me get her like 20 and verse, uh, chapter 20 and, 9, and chapter 19, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut and the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, and we read this last week, uh, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. And I want you to notice here this morning in this one here, let uh, uh, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And 
this is something that we uh, were very blessed with when we can have this uh, assurance and when we can have this uh, prayer answered and we can have this fellowship with the Lord and it's it's going both ways and uh, and he's saying peace be unto you Amen. Uh, uh, we need that comfort people uh, I, and so many times like I said well, well, sometimes I just don't get that comfort and I, I, I desire it and I want it and so here that's what I wanted you to, I wanted you to see here in the and blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And that's why that Jesus spoke to them over here in, in, in 20 there, uh, about peace be unto you, because that was the disciples that he come in to see. And now, <clears throat> in verse 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteous, righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Of heaven, and here again is another promise that's, that's given to us that we are we are blessed because we know the Lord. Amen. Because we've been saved, we have a a uh, we have a birth, a new birth that has happened to us, and we know the Lord. And He's saying this morning here in this, blessed, blessed are they which persecute are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom so when we have persecution we need to we need to be able to see that that's that's part of the plan mm -hmm. because uh god was person uh, jesus was persecuted right. many many times and he he withstood it he took it and he he sees us when we're persecuted and he uh he can, he can, he can have a closer walk with us when we certain, when we have that persecution and we withstand it. So he said, "Blessed are they which which are persecuted for righteousness' sake." Now I know a lot of times we're persecuted for other things, but when we're persecuted for righteousness' sake, we need to thank the Lord and say, "Well, it, it, you know." Uh, and then Peter and them one time they come back or some of the apostle Paul come back and told the others about being persecuted and they praised the Lord because they were persecuted. Amen. And that's what we uh, as Christians we should have a desire to do that and we should do it because that's that's what the, the Lord would have us to do. Verse 11 Blessed are they when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Now that is that's that's hard to say. And, and you know those old so and souls over there at that church, they just do this and they do that. And they believe this. Listen, what does he say? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Amen. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And so you can read this in the uh, in 2 Corinthians 4, 8, I believe it's where I've got it marked, uh, about uh, uh, um, 2 Corinthians 4. Verse 8. Uh, uh, notice verse 7 of the of, of 4. Ble uh, but we have this treasure in hidden vessels that the uh, excellency of, of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are per perplexed, but not in de despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. These are some of the things this morning that we should be able to hang on and praise the Lord and say, Lord, I know you're with me uh, and, and times is looking bad and everything. But listen, these these persecutions and things are not going to get, they're not going to get any lighter on the Christian. Right. They're going to get worse. And so we need to get our skin a little bit tougher because, listen, we're going to have to have, we're going to have to put up with it. it it's coming and it, it's it, you can see it see it every every day that it that happens there's something else that's coming up uh some kind of thing that's against the lord teachings that are and he says here persecuted in verse uh, nine but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed listen that's a wonderful thing but not 
The Lord is always there. And listen, we, we cannot, for some reason or another, understand that God is on the throne. And that He's there and He's watching over us. If we could just, if we could just grasp that close enough and, and see that, we would be a whole lot happier people. Amen. Because, listen, uh, we have these problems. And, and God is there. And Jesus is there. And He takes our prayers and He presents them to God. And God says, I, 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 cannot, I cannot deny Jesus because He's my Son. And He has brought these prayers to me. And He said, Father, they're mine. And listen, these prayers that we pray, that we're, we're qualified to pray for, with these prayers, they can they can they can make a difference. Amen. So many people, so many times. I mean, they just they whisper a little something other, and it's gone. And well, that's good enough. But listen, if you'll get down with the Lord and get serious with Him, you'll see some results. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Amen. I know. I know what He can do. I've, I've had him to do too many things in my life, and I could see it just as well when we're working and how it, and, and, and it's, it's, it's real, people. Amen. We just don't, we just don't, we just don't see it real enough. And so, here he said in verse, uh, verse 10, always bearing, uh, bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. And make it, make it made, made manifested in our mortal flesh. Notice, so then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. So, you know, that's, that's just, that's, that's the plainest. I, I mean, I can't make a point on that. So, back in our lesson, in, in, uh, in verse, uh, uh, verse 12, it says, Rejoicing and exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And so, uh, these are the things that, that uh, uh, he, he is telling these disciples. And here is the, the key to the thing here again. And he's talking to you and to me even as he was talking to his disciples and, and, and there, ye are the salt of the earth. Amen. You are the ones, you are the salt. You are the ones that 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 makes the difference in the place. You are the one that can go out and tell other people about the Lord Jesus Christ. You are the one that can read your, your Bible and pray and get things done. And he says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. And so that's the thing this morning. We want to stay, we want to stay blessed of the Lord. And we don't want to become salt that's lost that's lost its savor and is uh, good for nothing. Right. We need to stay close to the Lord and and uh, and stay in His Word and uh, just just uh, just stay as close as you can. And that, and that's that's the that's the thing that that will that will bless us is staying close to the Lord. So that's our lesson this morning. Uh, uh, I, I hope that I hope that if you if sometimes you get a chance. You just read these things here, and you can run references on them, and uh, and uh, you get a different me, and you get a whole lot more out of it. And uh, the psalmist, the psalmist was uh, in in a lot of these things. He he he, uh, he uh, added to a lot of this uh, that we read this morning. So uh, thank you all for listening to my uh, reading, and uh, I hope that it will bless you in some way. Thank you all so much.